And then, um, just to lay out the rest of the evening, we have a very specific item that we're going to take up that has to do with um, clarifying the special permit criterion five that has to do with energy and natural resources. Um, after which, the bulk of the meeting will be to continue our discussion on uh, zoning redesign. <laughs> okay, so I'm Deb Crossley, um, newly the chair of the Zion Planning Committee this term, um, so bear with me as I get my bearings um, coming in from public facilities. And I am joined at the start of the meeting to my left with uh, Josh Princeton, who is at large from Ward 4. My right, Susan Altway, at large from Ward 2. Victoria Danberg, at large from Ward 6. Thank you very much. Lyle Baker, uh, Ward Council from Ward 7. Um, Pam Wright, at large from Ward 3. And that is the committee so far seated. Uh, and our committee clerk, Nathan Jackaloni. We are also joined by, um, there's no one else on our committee, right? Is that Andrew? No, no. We are also joined by Alicia uh, Bowman, Counselor from Ward, uh, at Large from Ward 6, Andrea Downs at Large from Ward 5, Andrea Kelly at Large from Ward 3, and Emily Morton, Ward Counselor Ward 2, Not, and Julie <laughs> Malky, uh, Ward Counselor Ward 3. Facebook Living. And, I'm sorry? Facebook Living. Say that again? She's Facebook Live. She's recording. She's recording. She's live okay. streaming right now. Facebook Live. Um, is there someone at the door? No. Okay. So, with that said, um, the, I'm going to read the item into the record. Um, we may have uh, some brief things to say from folks who have put this item forward, and then we will open the public hearing. Item 3720 is a proposal to amend. Uh, uh, ordinances by creating a really but to create a temporary suspension of our on landmark designations. Um, and at Calculus Albright, Offenfoss, Crossway, Downs, Kelly, Lipoff, Greenberg, Princeton, Noel, Leary, and Danberg, proposing an amendment to Chapter 22 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Newton, 2017, to temporarily suspend nominations made by the Historical Commission and the City Council for landmark designations of land buildings and structures in the City of Newton in order to allow the City adequate time to review the landmark ordinance and consider what revisions are appropriate. The temporary suspension will prevent and suspend the processing and approval of any property currently under consideration for landmark designation and would temporarily suspend future landmark designations made by the Historic Commission and the City Council. Landmark nominations made by the Mayor, Director of Planning, uh, of Development, uh, Director of Planning and Development, and the Commissioner of Inspection and Services shall not be affected. The temporary suspension shall end no later than December 31st, 2020. This was taken up and held on January 13th. And we are joined by Councillor Leary, Councillor at Large from Ward 1. Is there are there more than a couple of people out there? You can come in, uh, push in to the room a little further if you want to hear about it. Might not be any more comfortable than where you are, but um, and maybe one of these chairs can be pulled back for you. And we're joined by uh, Councilor um, Maria Greenberg, more Councilor from Ward One. Andrea, would you like to come up to the table since you're going to be uh, leading part of the discussion, and that will give another share for um, this person who might go across the room and we'll take up that chair? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. We can move around. So, uh, Council Kelly, since you initiated this work, would you like to tell the committee and the audience a little bit about why you did so? what we're doing, um, what we're hoping to do in terms of working together to amend the ordinance, and then um, the fact that, of course, tonight is just about asking for a temporary suspension so that we can do that work. Yes, thank you. I would be happy to. Um, to me, this seemed simple and clear-cut with the course. Now I realize I'm an elected official in local politics. Something clear cut, but to me it seemed to make sense that while we were reviewing and updating an ordinance, it might change significantly in the next few months of the review process. It made sense to call. 
default moving forward on landmark, <coughs> historic landmark designations during that period of time in case some of those designations got made in ways that were not compatible with the changes that were made. Um, I've, I've seen this happen on other things. Uh, I, I don't like the term moratorium <coughs> as a public policy process, but a temporary suspension while we work this through seemed to make sense to me. Um, <coughs> there is a working group in place. There is commitment by the city council and the mayor and I believe the planning department and the historic preservation aspects of that to work on the ordinance, which right now is not functional in several key aspects. Um, and beyond what's not functional, there are a couple of areas that just need to be rethought through, clarified, and cleared up. I would say starting with the nomination process, like who can nominate a property, is a question. We've <coughs> The working group has only had one meeting and kind of wrestled with some of this, but for instance, should the historic commission members be able to designate or nominate a property when they are the ones who then vote on it? That seems to possibly be a conflict that should be cleared up. Um, there are some suggestions on the table. We haven't really worked that through. I would say overall, there is, I think, a certain lack of input from property owners that we might want to address from both a when are they notified perspective to do they have a right to have a say in the process at all? At which point, in what way do we listen to them? And I think most importantly, the appeals process. Um, is, is not currently in place because the body that's designated in the ordinance to <coughs> uh, review an appeal by an aggrieved party, which would typically be an owner, is no longer operating in that capacity. Even before we get to that, if, if a property is not currently on the National Register of Historic Places, it needs to uh, go to, currently, the Massachusetts Historical Commission to weigh in it's not a determination, but they, they weigh in on the eligibility to meet that criteria. Right now, the Mass Historical Commission is no longer operating in that capacity. So we have a couple of the really important missing links in our ordinance. Again, I think particularly around property rights of owners, the balance between is the goal historic preservation or preventing development, some legal definitions uh, legal and other non uh, definitions need to be, I think, looked up for consistency, redundancy. For instance, the term preferably preserved seems to be equal to historically significant, and I'm not sure that that's what we want when landmarking is the highest order. Um, so there are just some, there are, there are several aspects that, that for, for both policy setting <coughs> and protection of, of all sides of of why this ordinance exists, I think really needs to be reviewed. <coughs> the um, delay is because some of these aspects might change. For instance, if, if the 50 year mark gets changed to 75, and within the next few months, properties that are 50 years or older get designated, right now there's no way to undo a landmark designation. And is that something you want to? Sorry, it's kind of noisy. Sorry. <laughs> um, so anyway, the, the reason why and I believe 12 or 13 other counselors adopted this originally was to just pause, because the real intention is to clean up and clarify and make consistent the ordinance. So um, I guess I should just stop because I don't need to say the same thing. Twice. Okay. Before, um, so tonight's meeting is really it's not about what we're doing with the ordinance. That would have to go to a separate public hearing when the, there's a subcommittee that was assigned last term. They've had just one meeting, um, and there have been a number of modifications proposed. Um, uh, and work, uh, we work with Katie Holmes uh, from the planning department and Andrew Lee from the law department. Um, um, and there's still a lot of outstanding items that couldn't be discussed within a two hour period. So the proposal at this point is um, that while we are uh, working on this ordinance, that um, the opportunities for landmarking, either 
uh, it says here, there's very specific language here, be suspended except in certain cases. We can talk about whether or not it should be suspended. I'm sure we're gonna hear from the public on, on several items. Whether or not it should be suspended during this period or whether or not the rules should change during this period. Um, one of the big things that was, um, that folks didn't seem to agree on, I'll say, is who and, uh, and or how many people uh, should be deciding uh, a nomination and whether or not it should uh, be landmark. So, uh, can I just clarify the process? Sure. So, your intention is to hear from the public on the on the specific item and then bring it back into committee for discussion. Correct. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, so, Larry, last time we, we discussed this, we also had talked about uh, Katie Holmes giving a presentation, sort of being a broad overview that might answer some of the questions or at least put people all on the same page. That's on what I remember. The ordinance or on the suspension? A, a, no, a discussion about landmarking in general, sort of a broader overview. And I know that Katie had done a very good presentation before last term, mm -hmm. and I thought it might have been helpful for people to see it again. Especially yeah, there was a memo in last week's council mm -hmm. that came. Is it the case 
um, that uh, if it goes through the process, and let's say a developer were to <coughs> want to demolish it for, uh, so that the developer could uh, build a larger project, it, if it's determined by the NHC um, that the development could not be economically feasible, is that grounds for trumping the landmarking? I can't comment on what the grounds would be. All I would say is the timing of the designation at the landmark is irrelevant. If it's, it, it, can't, it can be waived, going into exactly what factors are considered for waiving it, I'm not entirely sure. Are you talking, sorry, um, are you referencing through a 40B or just? Yes, referencing it through, through a 40B. Through a 40B, the standard is whether or not it makes the project um, uneconomic. Okay. I just wanted to put that out there so that we understand the limits of mm -hmm. our authority or its authority. Anything else? Any other questions? I'm happy to answer. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee before I open the public hearing? Or a Question. <clears throat> um, yes, um, I was under the impression initially that um, one problem was that the historical commission itself could nominate and then approve. But on reading the language, and maybe Katie can clar clarify this, it sounds like it only takes one uh, commission member to nominate, and then it would be three quarters approval needed to actually landmark. So there's really, it's not like, it's not like the same body is doing the nominating and the approving, there's a difference between who's nominating and who's approving. That's right. Uh, when the Maintenance Historical Commission member could nominate, it would then go to the Maintenance Historical Commission to then forward the nomination. Right, and okay. And that same Maintenance Historical Commission makes the designation at the end of the process. And okay. that person, the nominator, can also vote. Exactly. Okay, uh, Councillor Fraser. Uh, does the person um, making the nominations have to have a case for why they're nominating it? Yes, they should have to present their reasons to do it. So. Other counselors before I open the public hearing? So, how many get nominated? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> how many actually get nominated and then how many get approved for landmarking? Um, since 1985, it's been on average one or two a year. And some years go by, several years on occasion have gone by with no nominations and no designations. So like 50% get approved? Or percentage How many of those? All right, so I've been here 14 years. Uh, I would say that probably seven have been proposed and four have been designated. Shield, 45 LA Avenue. Um, thank you. Your name again? Oh, Shield, H E. Sure. Can I do it at the end? In the yes, yes, yes. Okay, sorry. Um, thank you for the opportunity to appear. I'm enjoying the cozier, more intimate public comment. <laughs> um, a couple points I would just raise. One, I do rise in opposition to the, the landmark um, moratorium. Respectfully, I think it's unwise for this body's and legislative body to be ceding authority entirely for a period of time to the executive branch um, that's clearly granted to it under our ordinances. No doubt my views on this are informed a little bit by the time I spent working for late Congressman John Dingell, who had a very strong view on jurisdiction. Um, for those who don't know, he kept a picture of the earth in his office to remind everyone that his committee had jurisdiction. He felt over that. 
So I feel this body walking away from any responsibility um, to me strikes as ill-advised, but also starts to raise questions of what's the impetus and why. Um, and why the rush, and why would we for such a long period? Uh, the Globe recently published an editorial saying that um, we should all be taking one for the team for development to address poor modeling crisis. Residents, um, private sector, government bodies. Um, I've been observing you closely and, and part of conversations for the last better part of 12 months, and in my view, it seems that we're favoring one part of that group more than well, the developers. Um, certainly, we've, I've chatted with a number of you around projects like Washington Place, Riverside, Northland coming in at the bare minimum of their affordable housing criteria. 17% in many cases. We have a huge crisis. We're putting massive housing units online, very small percentages for affordable. Um, also discussed the seven million for INI funding for Northland. Um, I've asked a number why we couldn't get the full amount and was told if they came with that number that that would have to cover everything. Again, these are just two, but I don't think I'm alone when I say there seems to be a trend that as we look at how we balance all three of those constituencies, we're tilting a little bit to the developers. This feels like the latest example of that, where properties that could, will lose the opportunity to be considered for landmarking could be destroyed as demolition proceeds and less nuclear development that needs to happen, but could be lost forever, irrevocably, that we don't, as this goes into place. Um, cities and towns all over the U.S. have made this work. They've been able to develop properties and preserve landmarks, and often there's evidence, a big body of evidence, to say it can work together. So I think for us to lose that right and put that on the shelf is a mistake. I also think we're better. I think we, the talent in this room alone, and present speaker excluded, we can solve these problems. I think this solution seems extreme and too much. So I hope you will not approve this measure. I hope you will retain your position in the process and certainly remain open to changes and, and working with the constituents and developers that you should to do it. And I really hope that as we develop for the next 100 years, we're able to keep those treasures or those few examples, as you said, that we often do approve. And, there are a number, I'm, without getting into too much, tonight's bedtime story is gonna be about Seth Davis showing up here with 15 cents in his pocket, which is $4 by today's standards, nothing, became the premier develop, developer, educator, and investor in the West Eden. Seems like something we should be thinking about preserving for all of us. So, Thank I appreciate you. the opportunity here. I should tell people, uh, we're gonna try and stick to two minutes, you did very well, thank you. I normally don't, so thank you. Um, and if you'd like to submit your comments in writing, we're happy to take them. So when we started this meeting, all of the seats were not filled. A few minutes before the meeting, in fact, only half of the seats were filled in the room. And there's a few people out in the hallway. I can vote. I'll give you a seat up. Well, how many people in the hallway? Three. 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 Four. Okay. I, I know, I would like to invite you in the room, Chair, otherwise it'll take us a few minutes to get going to the chamber. Is that what we would like to do? Would people rather go into the chamber? I hope we stay here at the end. Yeah, I'm sorry, I misjudged anyone. I think here five minutes before the hour, there were hardly any people in here. <laughs> so, um, okay, um, we have another seat over here. Here, someone can grab that seat. Really? Slide it's over? You have a chair back here. Brenda. You want that? Oh, grab it. I can stand up. If somebody wants to sit here. Sure. My my name is John von Bargen. I'm a resident of Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, good evening. I think I'm somebody that can offer a unique uh, perspective on landmarking, having spent a great deal of time and money over the last year trying to buy 279 Fuller Street, located in, in West Newton, uh, a residential house uh, that has now proven to be, I would say, largely unsaleable given NHC's sole view it should be landmarked. I'm a prospective resident of Newton and wanted city councilors tonight to hear a letter that I wrote mm -hmm. to Mayor Fuller last fall pertaining to this issue. Ruth Ann, 
My wife and I are longtime Bostonians, having spent over 20 years in the city. We call Cambridge home for our three young boys and having been searching to move to West Newton for quite some time. My wife and I spent the summer and fall getting to know the Galligan family, which consists of three siblings, two of which are to my right, that grew up in Newton and are trying to find a family home, um, or a family rather, to buy their family's home after their, mother's pa their mother passed. As of a few weeks ago, we were days away from transacting with the Galligans until a paper trail surfaced that was drafted and sent by the NHC to the Massachusetts Historic Commission, establishing grounds for what could become a National Historic Registered Home and a home deemed a landmark in the town of Newton. I'd welcome the opportunity to meet with you to seek guidance for my family. To be candid, my sense is the challenges the Galligans face selling their home and the risks that exist for me as a buyer are not conducive to the long-term growth of a town like Newton. I've spent an exorbitant amount of time online, uh, time and money with attorneys, builders, and architects, and despite NHC's proposal, I have collectively drawn the following conclusions about 279 Fuller. Number one, while an older home, it's not historic and that prior residents would be known by citizens of Newton as historically significant people. In other words, the Obamas didn't live there. <laughs> Number two, the architecture is not unique or representative of a specific style, but rather an odd blend of architectures that architects have told me is architecturally insignificant. Number three, the Galligans have been paying taxes on an assessed value that is far greater than if the home was landmarked. Number four, the house is out of code, has very low ceilings, and is non-economical to preserve given the work involved. And number five, my hunch from numerous conversations is the neighbors around 279 would vote in favor of a fresh, new, and modest home to complement the scenic drive of Fuller Street. Ultimately, we are a family looking to become long-term residents of Newton and raise our boys in the community and neighborhood schools. 279 Fuller is a place we'd like to call home for the next 40 years. But unfortunately, the risks in the ordinance and what, appear to be, what appears to be the opinion of NHC to landmark 279 has left the Galligans and my family, as prospective buyers, little visibility into what NHC will determine feasible. Further, and in complete transparency, I met with NHC in person a few weeks ago and effectively heard anything can be renovated and we should really consider collaborating with NHC, which given my extensive and third-party diligence and facts above, feels like NHC is bordering on eminent domain. I'm proud of my family and what they can bring to a town like Newton, and I thought you'd be interested in the history and facts above regarding 279 Fuller which may present similar obstacles for other prospective residents of Newton. Regards, John Bombargan. Also worth noting, and outside the letter for everyone's benefit, is unfortunately, even with this proposed ban on landmarking, my family still cannot consider buying 279 Fuller because of the 12-month demolition to delay, which would lapse at this ban and pose the same uncertainty regarding landmarking. So I'm here purely to help the town recognize the implications of landmarking ordinance and to help this lovely family try to find a saleable path for their home. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Now, if you would like to submit your comments, we'd be happy to take them. I, I emailed them earlier. Great. Thank you. Uh, next, sir. Uh, just a couple comments uh, regarding the name and address, uh, please. Bill Resner, 1058 Walnut Street, Newton Highlands. Um, uh, regarding the committee makeup, uh, reviewing the landmark ordinance, it seems to me that uh, we're not including any members of the historical commission, which should be a party to this. Just my own opinion. Oh, there is one, actually, on the subcommittee. You huh? do have an NHC member, and, yeah. and Katie's on it also. I'm sorry. Do you, I'm sorry. Do you mean on the subcommittee or in the room? No, you, 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 you had it. There was a discussion earlier, just a few minutes ago, at the beginning of the meeting, <coughs> as to the makeup of the, of the uh, committee that's reviewing we're going we're to be working group. Work group. group. Yes. yes, we do have a member of the NHC on the working group. One member. Yes. Yeah. And I and and staff. And and Katie. Yeah, but you are a part of the city executive branch of the city. Mr. Reznor, I'm going to ask you to speak to the item, please. So, so well, that's, item. that's one issue that I I raised. Okay. Second issue is makeup of the historical commission in and of itself, which is a part of a uh, of a letter I reviewed just the other day. Uh, and included the new makeup proposed to include one architect. And it seems to me a historic, that this is, a historical commission is really about architecture to a great extent, and that two or three or even four architects as members would be Mr. Ezra, I would really like you to speak to the item because as I said earlier, and I hope um, everybody heard this, we will have another public hearing. Whether or not this, the, this item is proposed suspension passes, we will have another public <coughs> hearing as the, the working group 
comes up with a draft and brings it before this committee, um, and it won't be done at that point. Uh, there will be another public hearing set to look at okay. whatever the items are that we're, um, we're grappling with. And the committee makeups are some of those items. All right. And the third issue, uh, uh, in, in, in a way, responding to my neighbor right next door to me here, uh, could there be some uh, uh, financially compensated some financial compensation in terms of taxation for a landmark property. I mean, if, if, if to be landmark is to reduce the value of the property, uh, is there some, would there be, could there be a mechanism uh, that, that, that the owner of that property, instead of suffering? We will take note of that, but we're still not addressing that. Do you have anything no, to say left on the item? No. Thank you very much. Who would like to speak to the item? Uh, woman in that stretcher. Hi, I'm Jane Rosenoff. I live at Nine Vincent Street in West Newton. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. What's your oh, name? Jane Rosenoff. I, okay. I'm at Nine Vincent Street in West Newton, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak tonight. So I walk through West Newton all, all very often. I really appreciate the beauty and the history and the importance of the historic buildings there. And I think our village centers and the Victorian homes are among the reasons people are attracted to Newton. I urge you not to approve the proposed suspension of the landmarking ordinance. I find it highly unusual to suspend an ordinance while it's being reviewed. And has this ever been done before? It has. If a process is important enough to be governed by the ordinance, I just find it unusual, even for a short time, to say we've done it before. Because okay. I wonder if you would suspend a noise ordinance with a loud, <laughs> yeah, loud exactly. blowing at 3 a.m. Then yeah. <laughs> we <laughs> need to do that. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, to me, it's especially important to have landmark, landmarking available now, since there's so much proposed development. And it's, it's a very high bar. We obviously don't landmark a lot of buildings. Um, and I don't think giving the mayor and two other administration officials the exclusive power to nominate landmarks is an adequate safeguard. The historical commission and city council shouldn't be left out of the process my opinion. So I was surprised to learn that even buildings that are individually listed on the National Register of Historic Places aren't necessarily considered landmarks. I learned the process on the historic buildings. And there are buildings in West Newton that are on the National Register that are definitely not protected. And I think most West Newton residents, I'm addressing West Newton because that's where I live, but I think it's relevant to other places too, would consider the Davis Tavern, which was built in 1831, and the Robinson or CVS building in 1875 kind of iconic and would be really upset if they were demolished. And I know there are no current plans to demolish them right now, but wouldn't you want the city to be able to protect them for the future? Um, you know, once they're torn down, they're gone forever, you know? And I think the Washington Street vision plan that the city council approved clearly states that one goal is to maintain uniqueness and lower heights in the village center. So protecting a few, and there's very few that you do protect, historic buildings and village centers, I think is consistent with the vision. I'd also like to add, I don't think protecting a very select number of historic buildings is counter to the city's effort to revitalize businesses in our villages. These historic buildings can continue to support their <coughs> you know, business tenants. And I think with all the additional residents from new development, things are gonna thrive with more walk-in traffic and it'll help um, the business environment there. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Carol, Carol, 325 Lake Avenue, Newton Highlands. Um, I'm a little mystified why only part of what the working group is looking at is being proposed for suspension, because the working group is also looking at the whole demolition mm -hmm. part of the ordinance. So for starters, to say <coughs> we're looking at all of it, just hold this, it doesn't seem sensible. Um, there's also this tone of suspicion. Is the historical commission up to the job? And you know, I'm not gonna judge, but there is that sense of are we judging the ability of our Newton Historical Commission? And that's part and parcel of this proposal. Thank you. Um, we're not gonna engage in conversation, but we'll take it up in discussion afterwards, all right? Um, woman in the pink sweater. Uh, I'm Natalie Galligan, the um, homeowner to which John Von Bargain was referring. And I'm specifically speaking to the unintended consequences that may occur with landmarking. Um, I apologize, I, 
I do have a bit to say, and I'll try to say it as briefly as I can. Um, in April, I became a fourth generation Newton homeowner. Um, several branches of my family have lived in Newton for over 100 years. One set of great grandparents settled here in the mid 1800s, the other in the early 1900s. So my family has enjoyed Newton life for over 150 years here. Um, my parents owned three homes in Newton in the span of 70 years. First, they bought their starter home in Newton Highlands, moved to Wabin, and then worked hard to buy a house in West Newton. That's where I spent most of my youth. Um, my parents bought the house before the establishment of the Newton Historical Commission, so 1974. I'm not sure, right now, speaking to you, and I apologize, I'm nervous, that they would have made the same decision, seeing the burden their choice has put on me and my siblings. in this current state of affairs. My mother, born here, Newton Wellesley Hospital, died last April, leaving us to inherit her home. Our, our first knowledge of landmarking came when my siblings and I went to sell the house. We received an offer, and we were very excited that a young family would move in and enjoy the, fam the family home that we enjoyed for 46 years. It was then we were asked if the house had landmarked, or landmarked, or it could be landmarked. Naively and honestly, I don't know. What is landmarking? We don't know anything about it. My parents bought this home in 74. We don't know anything about landmarking. No one ever mentioned it to her in those 46 years. Still, the idea that the house could get landmarked scared the prospective buyers away and they rescinded their offer. I'm not sure if it's coincidence or not, but the buyer had visited City Hall to gather information on the house, and the next thing, he backed out of the PNS. This was incredibly disappointing to us and prompted us to look, as family, to look into landmarking. Now we were thrust into the mysterious world of landmarking. How does landmarking happen? What's the procedure? Who decides? Is there something we have to worry about? We've read up on various landmark cases. They're all different. No one, nothing seems clear cut. Is there a set criteria for land, land, landmarking? Oh my God, now we have to hire lawyers. All we want to do is sell our house. Excuse me. Hi. You're over two minutes, and um, can you give us the essays in a couple sentences and submit your comments to the committee? I'm asking that the criteria for landmarking is clear cut, that it's transparent to the average person. And we know that 88% of the homes in Newton are over 50 years old. Everyone here probably has the prospect of being landmarked, of going through demolition delays. That's almost everyone here who would go through what we have gone through as a family who are just trying to sell our home. We're trying to carry another home. We don't have the resources, millions of dollars to renovate. So I want just want people to see, yes, I believe that there are places that are historic. Old is not historic. And I just hope that the committees pay attention to that, pay attention to the little person who's involved. Not the, you know, the commercials, buildings, that's, that's their issue. I'm talking to you from a homeowner, from someone who grew up here in Newton, and I'm asking you that you do suspend this landmarking until the ordinance is straightened out until we understand, that the everyday person understands what is going on and how we are affected. And I believe that all you are affected by this, even though it may not. I want you to see the face of who it's affecting. And it's affecting me and my family. So Thank please you very suspend. Much. Your point is well taken. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, next. Next in the row. Uh, my name is Mary Frances Galligan. I live at 279 Fourth Street. I'm speaking uh, about from a gentleman that was unable to attend today's meeting. Uh, not able to attend today's meeting. I'm sorry, or, who is the gentleman? Oh, the gentleman's name is Aaron Ain. A I N. Aaron we have Ain. his letter, so uh, <coughs> if you can't do it in two minutes. I can do it in two minutes. Um, he would like to provide the following statement related to docket item 3720. I'm a resident of Newton. I've recently become aware of the initiatives of the Newton Historical Commission to landmark properties. My understanding is there's ambiguity, subjectivity involved in this process. 
In light of this, I support, support the suspension of landmarking until the ordinance can be rewritten and the process have more transparency. Many aspects of this practice trouble me, including my understanding that any person can begin the process to landmark a home without the consent of the homeowner. In my judgment, this is not fair or reasonable. I've become aware of how owning an older home may cause the homeowner real trouble, including reducing the value of the property. The threat of landmarking creates a landmarking cloud. This cloud makes it very difficult, maybe impossible, to sell the property at any value. How is that fair or reasonable? Does the NAC understand the impact of its actions on the homeowners, the potential buyers? As a homeowner, no one's asking me or my neighbors about our views on the future of our city as it relates to landmarking. In conjunction with speaking out in this way, the resident should be able to rely on its representatives to shape the city's development and future. Like some of our neighboring communities, Cambridge, Boston, the city councilors should be the ones voting on the landmarking of a property. It's not clear to me who the NHC is representing. It does not appear to be representing the homeowner. Certainly not me as a neighbor. I would encourage the elected officials in Newton versus the appointed NHC members to take a more active role in the current practices. Immediately modify or suspend as needed toward being more understanding and supportive of the homeowners and taxpayers in this city. Thank you very much. Aaron Ang. Uh, did you have a, an address? I do not have his address. Oh, oh okay. I can, get, I can send an email it to you. All right, thank you. Um, next in the back row, sir. Yes, hi. My name is Christian Rivero. Uh, 126 Elliott Ave. And I, I'm reading a, something else submitted by my wife who can't be here this evening. So, by placing a hold on one city planning lever, historic preservation, without placing a hold, and I, I may be mistaken here, on any other development permit, zoning, demolition request, the city is predetermining outcomes. The hold is an announcement to property owners that they have a window of time to take advantage of this moratorium on preservation. <coughs> Who will take advantage? It will be most enticing to the owners of historic commercial properties. There are many of these properties in the West Newton Village Center Historic District on the National Register of Historic Places. Many are owned by active developers. This will be the greatest gift you could give them. You will be handing the village's history to them, tied with a bow. Uh, the Davis Tavern and Robinson Blocks are iconic for West Newton. From Chestnut Street, they announce that you've entered our village, much like the Masonic Building does in Newtonville. Preserving these blocks of buildings, including the funeral home, protects the sense of place, just as well as if you were saving the churches. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the back before? Uh, yeah, my name is Frank Stearns. Uh, I have some comments that are um, supportive of the suspension. Uh, I'd like to just focus, uh, without repeating what others have said, specifically on the impact uh, of, of, of a nomination on commercial properties. Um, I, again, I, I endorse a lot of the comments that have previously been made. Uh, one thing that's sort of perhaps unique about the impact of Nominate, a landmark nomination on a commercial property is it has an immediate impact like this example had on, the, on a possible sale of a home. It has an immediate impact on the tenant certainty with respect to that property. If you have a commercial building that is, for example, that's vacant and you're actively trying to lease it, the moment it becomes known that the property's even been nominated, let alone de de designated, or even been proposed for nomination, uh, it makes very, it creates a, a significant additional challenge on finding uh, a normal by right lawful commercial tenant for that building. It also sends a message to the existing tenants in, in such a building that they have to really question uh, all the processes and procedures, potentially lengthy, potentially costly, that they'll have to go through in order to make an improvement to the building in which they run their business 
in order to put up signage, uh, which otherwise can be done uh, routinely through the inspectional services. It may involve, uh, will involve a uh, process and a hearing before the Historic Commission with an, out with an uncertain outcome. And it has all sorts of negative effects like that that really have, can, can chill the ability of that commercial property to function mm -hmm. as it's presently intended to function, which is to be a home for a business in Newton. So I'd ask you to really keep that in mind, uh, uh, endorse the suspension while you evaluate that kind of harm and the harm to the residential precedents that you've heard about. Um, look at other precedents uh, like Boston and Cambridge. And landmarking is very unusual in 350 some odd cities in Massachusetts. I think there's only three that have local landmarking, Newton, Boston, and Cambridge. And Newton's ordinance is not structured the same with the same checks and balances as Boston's and Cambridge's. So I encourage you to look at that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. White, 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 White. Uh, Lynn Weisberg, 5 Alden Street. Uh, I too won't repeat uh, what others have said, but I would urge you to adopt this temporary suspension. You've heard compelling testimony from the would-be buyer and the would-be sellers of this property on Fuller Street, and Councillor Kelly has identified a number of substantial problems with the ordinance in its current form. The best way to deal with those problems is through the working group that you've set up, and it doesn't make sense to have the Historical Commission move ahead with landmarking if, in fact, the ordinance is being considered for changes. So I would urge you to adopt the temporary suspension, and as you indicated earlier, it is not an unusual thing for the council to do, and it's definitely warranted here. Thank you. Um, Mr. Schlesinger. Madam Chairman, members of the committee, I'm Alan Schlesinger, 117 Westchester. I'm in favor of landmarking generally, where it's warranted. But we need a moratorium now because the process is completely broken. What Anybody needs in this process, in, in landmarking, should be a known process that the process works. There should be ascertainable standards so you know if you're at risk or an opportunity. And there needs to be some kind of a review process. It has to be, nobody can just say it is and you don't get a review. This is not the way we do things. We have none of those things in our landmarking procedure currently. In terms of the process, there is no process. Somebody can get an idea on the commission that they, a property should be landmarked for a reason or no reason, and then it's on the table. The ordinance calls for a ruling by the Mass Historic Commission, which they have said they won't get, so our, our process fails in itself. It doesn't make any sense. You can't get it done if you want it to. So there's no, uh, there's a de facto no process. There are no standards purely subjective as to whether somebody thinks that someone else was important or that something else was historic. Sometimes it's a whim. Sometimes it's used and it's been suggested it should be used as a development control. This isn't how we control development. It shouldn't be that someone said, well, he might build a big house there, so this should be landmark. That's not what it's for. It's for, it's for important historical assets of the city. We've even seen one case where a member of the commission wanted to buy a property and then it comes up for landmarking. This isn't right, this isn't how we do it either. And we've had the historic commission get a refresher course, we might say, in the open meeting law, uh, which they needed. Ultimately, there's no appeal. The ordinance says you appeal to the MAPC. They have no idea, they've never done an appeal. You can't appeal to the MAPC. And the grounds for the appeal to court are not substantive, they're procedural. So there is nobody who can say that the Historic Commission gets a quorum and votes it. There's, there's no appeal. There's nothing you can do. And we have very few, very few processes in this city and this country We have no appeal. If the system were working, it wouldn't need fixing. But it's not working. The Historic Commission is regularly acting outside the scope of its authority. This process needs retooling might as well uh, uh, call a halt and, and bit of a fixed time to get it retooled. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Riley. Hi, uh, Jerry Riley from 
Buffalo Spring Street in Upper Falls. I live in a house that was built in 1820, and I live in a neighborhood that was all built uh, around the same time. Um, and uh, since I moved to Newton, I've published two uh, local history books, uh, Ken Newcomb, uh, History of Upper Falls, uh, as you know, and uh, we published the King's Handbook of Newton, which is an amazing 1898 guide to Newton and those small villages. So I care deeply about local history. And, uh, preserving the landmarks of the city. And a couple of things I want to say. One is, you know, open up a dictionary. What is a landmark? Landmark is something everybody recognizes. It's, it's the thing that is Newton. It's the most important thing. It's, 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 it's something special. And if you go to the Historic Commission's website, they say this is the most protected building. And it's only to be used for the most important historical buildings in the city. And I support that. Uh, I think that's great. And if I go to the, the website and look at the 22 landmarks in the city of Newton that have been done over the last 35 years, I don't know them all, but the ones that I do know, they deserve landmark status. They're, they're important buildings. Uh, I'm here today because I just heard a week ago seven landmarks were being proposed in block or two in West Newton. I kind of looked into it, and I think there's something seriously broken here, because uh, while I'm sure those buildings have some history, um, I don't think seven buildings in one block are on this list, because we as a city have decided these are the most seven important buildings that should be protected in the city. And I think, you know, the process now is, is a little bit out of control and it can be hijacked. And I think it's something that um, is bad for historic preservation, it's bad for the city, and I think uh, I support your reviewing these. What exactly should be done to landmark rules, I don't know, but I do feel that they are kind of, the process is broken. So, Nathaniel Lippin, 53 Pine Crest Road. I guess I'm not opposing a suspension in principle. What we've heard, this first the suspension proposal first came before this committee in July of last year. And since that time, in the six months since then, there's been one meeting of the subcommittee. I'm not sure that this is going to get done by December 31st, 2020. Um, we, these suspensions regularly get postponed or continued for, for long periods of time. And so if you are going to go suspend something, I think there should be some procedure that requires there actually to be movement on the review so that people can have confidence that this isn't an open-ended permanent or semi-permanent um, suspension of the landmarking. It's proposed for one year. Yes, and that the time frame can, can is under discussion. And but so the, how many times has the garage ordinance been postponed? Um, this is not an unusual thing. Four. Something gets put in for a limited time period, and then gets continued for because they haven't finished the review or for whatever reason. So I think if there is some procedural mechanism to ensure that there is actually work being done and that there is going to be a date certain in the near future that's not 18 months, 24 months, 36 months down the line, I think that would give me a lot more comfort. This is going to, this, this, this suspension is going to be used for the purpose that it's being proposed rather than an alternative to limit the ability of city councilors and Mass Historical, <coughs> uh, sorry, Newton Historical Commission members to do what they've been allowed to do in proposing buildings for protection. So I hope that if you do suspend something, you do give people some assurance that they do, that they're gonna get movement and the process is gonna be reopened again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Hello, uh, Doug Cornelius. Uh, I'm a member of the New York Commission. Uh, I'll, I'll disagree with some of the statements there, but uh, to point out, uh, when the first moratorium was proposed last summer, I was uh, opposed to it, it was based on some flawed information that there was a whole rash of landmarking happening. 
uh, which was not true. Uh, there'd only been one or two landmarking, which was the normal course. Uh, however, all of a sudden now having seven landmarks indicates that something has changed in the process uh, and it's probably worth considering a moratorium to figure out what's happening with the process. Okay, sure. Anybody else who hasn't spoken who would like to speak? And I did think I saw a question for Katie to ask within the sure, parameters we did, of we your... We might have to wait for it to get answered, but, but yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Carol Clark, and I live at 1058 Walnut Street in Newton Harbor. And my question is whether a landmark building is treated any differently from a building in a historic district. Um, it's treated the same. The okay. building that is located in a designated local historic district. So, will the change in the landmarking uh, or in during the moratorium <coughs> affect any of, of the procedures for um, local in local districts? Chapter 40 C uh, districts are not under review at this time. They're not on the not just on the not the Anyone else? Okay, um, I believe it is not in the name. name. Oh, <laughs> I'm Raina Gatz, I live at 192 Pine Ridge Road in Wabin. Um, I believe it is not in the public benefit of Newton to temporarily suspend the ability of Newton historical commissioners or city councilors to nominate properties for landmark designation. To my knowledge, Newton has pretty consistently not supported the moratoria while reviewing or amending our ordinance. The city council did not support the teardown moratorium in 2014 or the MU4 moratorium in 2018 while we were amending our current ordinance or approving special permits in the city. There is no reason to suspend the ability of mayorally appointed New Newton historical commissioners or the duly elected city councilors from their ability to nominate properties for the landmark, dis landmark designation. Both parties have served the process well. I base this viewpoint on the most recent landmarking cases in Ward 5. In Ward 5, we had two properties recently nominated by council, one being landmark, the other not. 1615 Beacon Street was nominated by a councilor in 2014, and it was deemed um, that it merited landmarking, and it was landmarked in April of 2015. In May of 2017, 142 Neshobe was nominated by our three ward councilors, Alderman for Councilor Crosley, Rice, and Yates, formally requesting that the NHC authorize preparation of the Certified Local Government Eligibility Report to be sent to the Mass Historical Commission for its opinion on the potential eligibility of the property for listing in the National Register of Historical Properties. It was deemed not eligible, and it has been demolished since then. Um, we have not had the much needed conversation of balancing historic preservation with redevelopment in Newton especially in the historic <laughs> village centers. And this is a prerequisite. I would ask people to consider the thoughts in a book that I've been recently reading. Broadly speaking, property rights debate is about how to maintain a balance between the rights of society and the rights of property owners, even about changing the concepts of the nature of property, quote unquote. We, are now generally, we now generally accept that we have the right to clean air and clean water, and that any individual property owner has the right to pollute but they must be subordinated to the greater right of society to preserve the environment. <coughs> Some societies recognize a comparable right in the public to the preservation of society's cultural heritage. As applied to historic preservation, this debate is ultimately about the degree to which our society recognizes a right to the pres preservation of historic and cultural resources. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public I want to point out to the committee, we, um, this one of the letters we received was read into the record. Uh, we have a letter um, on the table from Councilor Markowitz, who um, I will send around to the committee. Um, it, 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 in case anyone didn't get to read it, he, makes, um, he wanted me to just make a couple of points. Um, uh, he would like, to, of course, he's on the docket item. He would like to see the suspension. Um, he's um, concerned about uh, a member of the historic commission being able to nominate and approve a property for land uh, landmarking, and he is um, he suggests um, possibly we could take.
share this or to bring into our discussion um, if a person initiates a, quest, a request that it be approved by council or some other larger body as a temporary measure, so just something to put on, on the table. Um, we have a very lengthy piece, which I can't even summarize, um, that uh, folks got the word from Robert Fox, who lives in West Newton, um, and who cites a number of uh, pieces of business uh, and arguments for why he thinks the suspension should be um, carried forward. Um, This is from Stefano Astrakudakis, I think. Um, so I'm, not sure that, but I'm just going to give. I'm just going to put all these forward because if we're going to have a discussion, we should have it with everyone's uh, information. Summarize or is it good? Yeah, I can do it briefly. Uh, let me just quickly go through Mark and Boone. Did you get one from Chuck or Fletch? No. And then you mean Chamber? Yes, yes, yes we did. Okay. okay. We said Malcolm Hodges. I don't think Malcolm Hodges should have one. They're brief, but I think they want to be sure that they're. I think they're Chuck or Fletch. Okay. The Newton Eaton Chamber would like to see the suspension go forward. They give reasons that for the higher interest, which is, of course, protecting. meeting tonight. He supports temporarily suspending it because of the unilateral capability of the new historic commission to landmark the structure, structure without a property owner's right to early notification, full participation in the process. He's a local architect, by the way, so I think he's sort of speaking on behalf of his clients. stepping back for a time and looking at all of these studies holistically in order to achieve a balance, and I'm just picking out a few sentences to be quick, but I will have him send it to all of you, but he just wanted to be sure to be heard tonight. So you had all the other ones. Okay. So if no one else would like to be heard from the public, I'm going to suggest we close, close the public hearings. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Oh. You have a counselor. Oh, I'm sorry. Not not me. Me. No, no, no. I'm, that's not. I'm going to hear oh, all counselors. But okay. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize you, um, uh, Councilor Gentile. I was the guy making all the noise. <laughs> I, I, I actually was distracted. So I then I'm going to take the conversation back into council, which includes members of the committee and others. Should I go ahead? Yeah. Uh, first, I, I'd like to give. Yeah, uh, first I wanted to give Katie Holmes a chance to comment on the number of communities that do have local landmarking ordinances. Is that known? Six or seven. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay, as, as the person who nominated the seven in West Newton recently, um, I guess I see that as um, making up for lost time rather than uh, you know a sudden spurt for no reason. And they are all in West Newton Village Center. They are not people's houses. 
they include the, as referred to before, you know, the iconic buildings that we've all seen for decades and have been around for a century or more, the Davis uh, Tavern, the Robinson Block, the uh, Bresnak Rudman, now named Funeral Home, uh, the Bank of Boston. Um, the, I, I think the recent hearing by the Historical Commission shows how they do their job and why they should be allowed to continue to do their job. Um, they, they ruled out two pretty overwhelmingly. Two that I nominated were already individually listed on the National Register, so they automatically got hearings. And the other three were discussed and voted on whether to find out more information. And that it's not an instant process. Uh, for those uh, requiring more information, there'll be, I guess, two more meetings. And for any of these to be landmarked, it requires a three-quarters vote. And that's a high bar in, in a uh, committee of seven seven usually people. Um, I find it really ironic that a, a, Attorney Stearns, I think, said that, and I noticed this the other day, too, said that uh, landmarking a building would make it hard to get tenants. Um, I would think rather the opposite, because we all saw what happened at the Ore Block in Newtonville when a developer comes in and buys a building and all the tenants have to leave. If that is an uncertainty, I don't know what is. I would think that landmarking a building would give uh, tenants the assurance that they're not going to be evicted for the building to be demolished. Um, I, I also feel, as uh, I think Raina gets alluded to, that uh, there's a balance between historic preservation and property rights. And in my view, it's, it's kind of an analogy to zoning. It's not government's job to ensure that everyone maximizes the value of their property at the expense of anything else, whether it's, you know, maximizing the value of a property you buy uh, knowingly or maximizing the property of a, uh, ma maximizing the value of a property that you're lucky enough to inherit. Um, I, I think there's a, there's a value that we see in Newton from having our old historic buildings still around us. You know, we're not, we're not a clone, we're not, a, we're not someplace like um, Alexandria, Virginia, where it's a swath of modern buildings. We've got a mix, and we can continue to have a mix. The buildings that I propose landmarking do not exclude development in the areas around them. They would make the environment of the new development more interesting by having a smattering of older buildings. I think, you know, we all know, I, I, I think I mentioned this last time, I mean, contrast the, you know, the north end of Boston to the west end. We kind of know what happens at the west end. The north end is where people want to go, places like the north end, the south end, the, the back bay, where we still have old buildings and a feeling of authenticity. When we get new development, it might be glitzy, it might be attractive for a while, but will it stand the test of time, and is it as interesting as what we're losing to get it? Thank you. Okay, and I... Okay, I just, I want to make sure we stay on topic today. I gave you okay. a lot of time because okay. I, I understand that... So basically, I, generated I'm, I'm kind of responding to people who were addressing the whole principle of landmarking as opposed to I the... Understand. So I'm, I'm sorry I diverted from the question at hand. I apologize. Well, I mean, it is, you know, what we're discussing here is related to the work that we have to do and what, from what I hear, what you're saying is that there's a lot of
council, except for being able to nominate a building, had no role after that. We have no role. And um, I was reading the Cambridge ordinance today, and what I thought one of the things that I thought was interesting is that they they consult with the planning board and I forget who other staff but they they don't do this by themselves. They consult with other planning entities, and the final approval does come from a vote of the city council. And so I, I think there's some merit into thinking about um, who's involved. And this came to my mind particularly when I went to the hearing the other night for the seven buildings in West Newton, where um, it occurs to me, and I actually wrote this to Mr. Heath today, that you know we have the Historic Commission, we have the Economic Development Commission, we have the Citizens Energy Commission, we have people who are staffers on these various topics within the planning department. And are they talking to each other? And, and um, are we sure that we want to landmark uh, commercial buildings in our village centers? Maybe we do, but shouldn't we have a conversation about that to decide what the impact will be on the commercial tax base of Newton? I know there are people here who say, you know, it, it, they should be, there should be more housing, and maybe there should be more housing, but there's certainly, we don't want to lose our commercial tax base either, and I wish that all of these various entities who have their silos, things to work on, we're talking to each other. Um, as for all of the reasons that many people have spoken to already, I think the ordinance is broken. And um, the most important part that's broken is, for me, is not only the appeals process and the MHC, but the fact that the definition in the ordinance for demolition delay is exactly the same word as it is for landmarking. And if landmarking is such a high bar, then there ought to be a description in the ordinance that explains that. Um, so this ordinance really needs a lot of work. It was written a long time ago. It might have had a, a small, a small um, amendment at some point along the way. But basically, it's, basically it's the same ordinance that we started with. Um, so I, I read this wonderful article about the Strand Bookstore, which is one of the, in, in Brooklyn, it's one of the last remaining bookstores in Brooklyn, uh, along the strip of the main strip. And, uh, and, the, and the Strand Bookstore is strongly against being landmarked. And they have this 5,000 signatures of people who understand why they don't want to be landmarked, because the bookstore is afraid that if the bar gets raised so high to fix various things that need to be fixed, that they will have to go out of business. So uh, there's a lot to consider here. Um, uh, I, I don't want to get into the issues of you know, the seven buildings or not. It really is a matter for me of we need, this ordinance needs some work. And there's lots to consider about just those landmarks and economic development and housing and energy usage and the climate action and um, I, I really think we need to take the time. I'm sorry, um, Daniel, that we have taken so long to get the work done. And I agree with you. We had the summer break, which caused, we had one meeting over the summer. And then unfortunately, Katie had got on jury duty. <laughs> so we, we had to cancel our meeting. And uh, we tried to reschedule, but people didn't want to meet without Katie. So you're right, we should be on this and we should get it done. And I 100% am on the same page with you. We should try and get it done in six months' time. But I really think it needs to be done and we need to <coughs> find a way to, to, to stop the process until we fix the ordinance. Thank you. Councilor Baker. Um, well, I'm going to recommend that we continue the, the process but not stop, stop it. And uh, um, I think we can do our work and figure out what changes. I don't agree with the characterization of the ordinance is broken. I think there are things that could be improved in it. But the fact that we preserve 22 buildings in the city uh, already that everybody I've heard so far seems to find valuable to have been preserved. And even the process that was described this evening indicates the Historical Commission is not a rubber stamp about any nominations. It does review things and then tries to make a decision. As I mentioned last time to some people who are not here, um, I, I think I'm the only council that lives in a building that is um, on the National Register of Historic Places by itself. Oh, you are? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it came. No, I'm not alone. But um, 
I'm in a historic district and my house has to go through review and we're still here and it's not a problem for us. I mean, in other words, landmarking isn't a terminal disease. Um, and I really think it's important to understand that it does allow property owners to do things with their property. They just have to get reviewed for architectural significance. So um, I, I think that we can work on the improvements to the ordinance that can be made. I don't mean that it's uh, uh, perfect, but I don't think it's worth stopping our process to do this. And I certainly don't like the idea of sort of saying, well, meanwhile, the executive can do this, but none of the counselors can in terms of nomination. So there are parts of this that also, I think, have substantive impact that I think are unwise. So um, I would like to move hold on this item uh, at an appropriate time, Madam Chair, and so that we can get on with our other work tonight, which is quite substantial. It is. There's potentially for some people a time issue, so we'll let everyone have their say. No, no, I understood. And, um, I'm not asking anybody not to say anything. So um, I don't support suspending the ordinance because once a building's gone, it's gone. If you're going to suspend the ordinance, then we should suspend demolition because I, I'm worried we're going to lose something. There are some issues and some big issues, but I think the historical um, commission is doing their job. Um, Councilor um, Maliki um, nominated seven. They kicked out two right away. Three others are going for further review. So they are going through the process. And nominating does not mean landmarking. And allowing just the mayor, the planning director, and ISD chair to nominate um, possible um, landmarks, to my knowledge, they never have in the past. And who's to say that they will do it in the future? So I worry. And I think part of the problem right now is, is in the past, it's been such a reactive, and a lot of things we do, it's all reactive, and it would be nice to be proactive. And so some of these are being proactive. <coughs> One of the buildings, the Davis Hotel, though, that whole area, that whole block, has gone under um, review um, for possible um, development. So it's in, in people's sights of possibly doing something in that area.
and most of what I was thinking has already been um, said. I um, feel that it's uh, it, it's important to have a review process that doesn't exist now, and I think that this is uh, means that we really need to look at this. Uh, and uh, I agree also with Nathaniel that we need to have a beginning and an end. The Joint Advisory Planning Group uh, from the, the Property Reuse Committee has 180 days to deliberate. To deliberate. After 180 days, they need to present a report. Um, I think we need to have a beginning and an end, and if we did, <coughs> Okay, thank you. Other committee members? Okay. Council Member Bowman. Um, I, I, I appreciate all the comments that everybody made. Um, I think, <laughs> and the comments from those online. <laughs> 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 Josh is our wittiest counselor. <laughs> what, I, I do feel that there's a little bit of a conflation between the nomination process and the approval process, the actual designation process, and people are sort of conflating the two and thinking that, you know, mere nomination is the decision, and that's certainly not accurate. But what concerns me is that the decision-making process is not as clear as it should be. I'm concerned that there is not an appeal process, and I'm really concerned that there's absolutely no process uh, in place to remove an improperly designated location, an improperly landmarked location. Um, so, although I am also familiar with the list of properties, I don't think that they're we'll all be accurately what's uh, landmarked. I'm scary. Well aware of at least one or two that I don't think are appropriately landmarked. So, um, I think I would be in favor of, of a short-term um, suspension of the landmarking ordinance so that we can figure that out. But I, I certainly echo the comments that um, this should be done expeditiously, and we should do this as, as soon as possible. In regards to length of time, I would note that, uh, for example, the JPG uh, has a six-month window beginning from when the uh, Joint Advisory Planning Group is already in place and ready to deliberate. So I would say that we would need mm -hmm. to give whatever body is going to look at this, be it the council or, or we need to determine what that body is. And, okay, if we, and, and know that they're going to begin the process as of a certain date and that it, the six month They've already uh, begun it. not start, the clock not start until they are, have begun their process, until the time that they begin their process. So if we're proposing six months with a report in three months, um, uh, you know, <laughs> that's a pretty short window. It is, but you know, the working group has already met um, and done some work and Gosh. Okay. Well, I can't uh, wait to hear about that. Her case. Case. Maybe the jury deals with the deciding body or something. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
going forward. Can we make a relatively speedy uh, response to the question about changing? That seems to me different from whether, in fact, we should suspend all the rules in the meantime or the nomination process. And I don't think those two are necessarily the same thing. I think you can ask for an expedited process. I will note that some of the people involved in that, myself included, yourself, I think, are sitting in this table who are also involved in a few other things in the city. So it's not like there's where JPG theoretically has no other role with possible few exceptions. So, uh, I, yeah, you know, <laughs> job, things to do, other things that like uh, go on. So I guess my question is whether if you're really concerned about it, you say, look, we'll revisit this in six months if you haven't brought something back and suspend the ordinance, as opposed to saying we're going to suspend it and wait and hope that you get things done. I mean, I would rather have uh, the reverse polarity and say, give us six months, get it back here, and if you don't, then we'll vote the suspension. Then I can see that because it gives us an opportunity to get something done, but not necessarily take the game away, which I find difficult. I'm having trouble following that logic, but I'm going to call on Council. Well, let me explain it then if you're having trouble because I want to make it clear. Leave things alone, but say if there, if something is not back in six months that we can vote on and clarify for the ordinance, then we will. I understand your proposal. I yeah. guess I'm not clear on how that works better. Uh, well, that's a policy question, but I thought you said you didn't understand it. So uh, you can so disagree with me. That's all right. right. Uh, on Council Chambers' point uh, of process, uh, I think I would consider if we don't want to have a temporary suspension or landmark designation, then I would like to. involves amending the ordinance. That's not in front of us. So we've got to dock it a new item if you want to do that. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's just different than what we have. We have before us an amendment, I mean, excuse me, a moratorium with some amendments to the ordinance, but uh, that's that's a different item. Now, it may be meritorious. I'm not saying I, I wouldn't support it, but there may be more support in the committee. But I think the point that you're making, and a number of us are making around the table, is that there are things that can be fixed in the ordinance. We ought to think about those and think them through. But I don't think that it's wise to set a precedent here of, of making a, a suspension of, of one of our ordinances while we do this process. I just, so I can't support that. But you know, the committee can do it one week. As the chair says, we can take it out to the council and have that conversation at large. And I have a question. <coughs>
in the moratorium when we had the marijuana ordinance. We had a choice of going forward with marijuana and we decided to suspend all work on marijuana for I think it was like eight months until the until everybody finished their work and we had time to write our write our ordinance the way we wanted it. So we just recently went through a moratorium for an ordinance. Well that was something that we hadn't done yet. Yeah, but we Thank had a craft and we decided to wait, 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 and we did wait, waited for eight months. But that's consistent with the suggestion I made, which is that we wait until we finish the process of review and then do that. But, you know, the committee can, I think. The was first. Yeah, the more time, we didn't accept any more applications at that point. I, I can't correct, sorry. But, um, so I guess the question is whether there's, uh, you know, do you want to try and vote this out? Yeah, I prefer to hold it because, uh, but, and I also, let me just say one other thing. I'm sympathetic to the concerns we've heard from individual testimony, but I think it's not a wise way to make policy to try and make it around what's happening with the individual properties. We've got to think about this institution and what's the best system. But that's okay. Um, I'm going to call on Councilor Bowman. We'll just vote the name on that. I'll vote the name on that. Thank you very much uh, uh, for letting me speak. Um, you know, the effect of landmarking is not unlike rezoning a property. And I said the effect of landmarking is not unlike rezoning a property. It has an impact on the value, it has an impact uh, on what you'll be able to do with the property. To rezone something, we actually require the city council, uh, a supermajority of the city council to vote uh, on rezoning. Um, so I would be very much in favor of a policy long term that gave the city council, like Cambridge and other communities, a voice in that. And I also think that it's important because, and I hadn't really thought about it this way until I heard um, some testimony today, is really the lack of a constituent, um, ability for a constituent to have somebody who has a voice in the process uh, to be able to participate because they don't have uh, they have the historical commission, but that's not an elected official that they can necessarily appeal to to understand the impact of uh, landmarking on their property. So I do think city council needs uh, needs a voice in this as a you know maybe the final check of you know do 18 people agree that this is also a you know a, a very important building that needs to be a 16 that need to be it needs to be landmarked, um, and I do think that us implementing that temporarily rather than the moratorium might be, um, I would vote for the moratorium, but I would also support even a temporary um, ordinance that would allow the um, so you're saying we'll do to do you're both. Saying so as a temporary motion to do have a, to adopt an item that says the process will continue as is and that um, it will have to come to city council to ensure that there aren't any truly egregious uh, so items to go forward. We could do both. We could do both. We could do both. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Council Leary. 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 Don't have that anymore. So I don't understand how. 
So is, are they the same thing? They are not the same thing. They're not the same thing. No. Okay. You need to be on the currently you need to be on the National Register in order to be eligible to be landmarked. The issue we run into, there were a couple of houses that the commission was looking at for possible landmarking that weren't already on the National Register. There's no mechanism now for the mass historic to say that it would be eligible for listing on the on the National Register. But what I was bringing up is I'm on the National Register. And I went from the Newton Historical, and I'm doing major renovations. And it just took me one meeting without a lawyer, without a lawyer <coughs> there. Just go in, explain what I'm doing, and we get approved. We can do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and it's Cassie Baker, and then Dan Burke. And we do need to wrap this up, folks. Okay. Again, so I think the, uh, we're talking about <laughs> relatively small number of properties that I both indicated we're living inside historic properties and been able to live with them, and, it, and it's not like it's the end of the world. It's different that you have to come through a review process. But involving the city council, hmm? <laughs> no, but involving the city council, and you know, we can get involved in everything at this stage. But I think it's a mistake. But I understand that, that it's not rezoning. It's saying if you go through a process where you live in your house or you live in your building and you get reviewed for the architectural significance of the changes and they meet the standards that are okay. So uh, I think that this is a whole lot of, of effort to try and, and deal with a problem that is not as great as being articulated. But I'm going to vote against the suspension. If you want to have move the suspension, let's move it and see where we are. Are you withdrawing your motion to hold? No, I'd like to see the motion to hold first and then see where we are. Okay. We have a motion to hold on the table. Thank you. 
Not yet. Okay. <laughs> Not yet. Um, hint. Nudge, nudge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hear. I hear. Um, in regards to what Councillor Wright said, I think you may have meant, you said that landmarking is equal to National Register. I think you may have meant is equal to being in a historic district, because that would be closer to landmarking than being on the National Your Register. National Register is what the kind of property you have. The process is like being in an historic district. Right. You just go through the okay. National, National Register is a list of properties yes. that you have to go see before they, they can be torn down in 18 months instead of in 12 months. Um, it, it, they can be torn down. Um, it, it's just a matter of time. They, they're given an extra six months of life. Um, <coughs> the process of landmarking, I think in, in another way to say this uh, than what Councillor Bowman um, explained, you are really granting and or removing, in a sense, value from a property by landmarking it. So this is a very, it's a very important issue uh, when a property is landmarked. I remember many years ago, it was close to when I first came on the board in 04, there was a property in Ward 1 that was a triple decker that was being land, that went up for landmarking and everyone was kind of scratching their heads as to why this building would be landmarked until we looked at what was next door to it and there was a medical building next door to it and the community wanted to landmark that building, not so much that the building was important, but that they didn't want the medical building to expand. Um, ultimately, if I remember correctly, the building was landmarked and stays landmarked today and the medical building did not and was not able to expand. That, to me, is the wrong reason for landmarking a building. It needs to be, it needs to be of value in its own right, not to prevent something from happening. the last triple I will do. I will do. I would like to speak, but if okay. you like to I, I will sure. therefore move approval um, on the six suspension. Months. Yes. In six months. With yes. a six month and a With three a six month, month review. Six month review. term and a three month and review. A three month review. Councillor Norton. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I just want to remind us that we can't please all the people all the time. And so I hear us, you know, worried about people who will be affected who are in them, and there's people who aren't in the room who will also be affected if there's, um, you know, tear downs of historic buildings. And um, I think that if we, it sounds like the numbers are minuscule that we're talking about here, and I feel like we need to keep in mind that if we, if we favor historic preservation and we get rid of this, and I think a more, I think this moratorium would last a long time. Um, yeah. We're going to have fewer historic buildings, and so I just think we need to think about how much we value that. And the beauty of a commission is that they are somewhat farther removed from the voters. And uh, the West Newton Historical District uh, proposal was a perfect example of this. Not everyone was against it. A lot of people were against it. And I can speak to this with some personal experience because I'm in the Newtonville Historic District. We had no idea what it meant. And then once we were in it, we hated it. And at, the point, at that point, Alderman Albright may remember, I organized a meeting with you and Steve Linsky and Marcia Johnson. We all hated it. We hated being in the Go Historic District. We wanted to get out of it. So fast forward 15 years, I love it. I have to go and beg permission to do things. The commission has gotten a lot more, um, a lot more um, flexible. Um, but there's no teardowns around us, and it's great. So I'm just saying, I've been on both sides of it. It would mean losing some control of some minuscule number of properties, but for what I think is the greater good of preserving some level of historic buildings in our city. Okay. So um, that's, that's all. That's, I'm not voting, obviously, I'm not on the committee, but I wanted to share that perspective. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to reiterate that we, are, I think all of us are in favor of historic preservation. <laughs> Say they are. If I were wanting to get a full tear down building, you'd do it during this moratorium. I think that we're at a point that that's now. You can take us to task for public if we don't get it done. Well, it wouldn't be, then the buildings are gone. It's not about me taking anyone to task. I think that's what would happen. Demolition is not there. We're proposing six months. We'll see if it's really six months. Okay. As a member of that committee, on the part of that 
subcommittee. I'm seeing how slowly we're moving. Yes, so far. Now, uh, we have a motion to approve this and move to full council by uh, Councilor Danberg a requirement of a three month report and a six month um, end date. And I want to take that on who actually did that. On the <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, all in favor?